Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. I'm your host, Mark Anthony Kay, and on this episode, I'm going to be reviewing a very cool box set that has just come out. Uh, one that I didn't know was going to be coming out, so it was a big surprise for me, and uh, one that I had to immediately buy. And I'll let me explain first uh, why with a little quick backstory. Back about, I think about maybe eight years ago, I was on a real big uh early 70s hard rock kick uh and uh i was really into the whole kind of you know uh british rock thing and stuff like that and uh you know my rock guitar player of choice from england or from the you know the british isles if you wish uh wasn't the one that most people probably think you know the the big three are jimmy page eric clapton uh, but those two are not my guitar players of choice mine was always jeff beck number three the third guy in the picture uh i always thought jeff beck had a really cool sound and uh he had a technique that i found fascinating and once he was you know once it's once i discovered that he was mainly a finger player like even as far as the picking hand is concerned i was just completely blown away and once he left playing the les paul and started playing the strat uh his technique was just something that i just was blown away by though his use of the whammy bar that the especially the one that comes with a fender strat i mean it's not exactly the most reliable whammy bar and keeping a guitar in tune with especially so how he does it i i just don't understand but uh he's a fantastic guitar player and what i'm trying to get out of here is the record that really got me into him was uh the Beck Bogart Apathy album, which is right here. I'll show up a picture of it. Um, unfortunately, these guys only did one studio album, and it's an incredible album. I mean, uh, and, uh, in, you know, I mean, I'd highly recommend it to anybody who hasn't had it uh, in their collection. Uh, just some great, great hard rock playing and some great songs <clears throat> in there as well. <clears throat> now, after that album came out, uh, a little bit later on, I discovered that there was, in fact, another record by Beck Bogart Apathy, and that was a live album that they recorded in 73 in Japan. But unfortunately, that album only came out in Japan on vinyl. So this has been a great white whale for me to try to hunt down and find. Even on Discogs, when I have found it, it's been really ridiculously priced and like not worth well not worth of course i want it so it'll be worth it but it's just a little out of my price range to be quite honest uh so i never ever had a chance to buy it on vinyl but then much to my surprise when i went into the local record store here in uh brampton which is outside of toronto here in ontario canada i saw this <clears throat> the beck bogart apathy box set live in japan 73 and live in london 1974. <clears throat> now uh this says that it includes two historic live recordings on four cds live at the uh Ko Ko Kosen kosenkin hall in osaka japan on may 18th and 19th 1973 and there's, there's also another show that's live at the Rainbow Theater on January 26, 1974, which, is, which has been previously unreleased. This also comes with a 60-page hard book with extensive liner notes and photos. There's also a replica tour book and a poster included in this. And in the back here, of course, you see uh, what's on this. There's, a, there's the uh, songs for both shows. And, of course, the three people in the band, Jeff Beck, on guitar, talk box, and vocals, Tim Bogart on bass and vocals, and Carmine Apathy, or a piece as he likes to say, drums and vocals. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's pop this open and take a quick look at it, and I'll give you my thoughts on this. Because like I said, this has been something that I've been looking for for a long time. This is just like a regular little box opening here. Uh, and so the first thing you have in here is it's one of these boxes where they have that little string thing here to like help get everything out 
And the first thing you get in here, if I can get it out here, of course. Oh, and of, and of course I lose the string doing that. Smart mark. Uh, there we go. You have the the 60 page hard book here, which has a lot of notes on the formation of the band and you know just what led up to it. Obviously, uh, Carmine and Tim were in Vanilla Fudge before they ended up playing with Jeff here. It talks about that, and it also talks about their time in Cactus when they were in there. Uh, I'm talking about Carmine and and uh, Tim, and it also talks about. Uh, Beck's solo album band that he did, the one with uh, Rod Stewart. That uh, that's another great album that I would love to talk about another time, which is just fantastic. Trust, I believe it's called, the first one, great album. But anyways, yeah, this this has a lot of great detail in there about the whole time with the band. Uh, that's number one. Let me see where I can put this here. Real quick. I'll put it under here. Uh, then you get, of course, as mentioned, the. Uh, replica Japanese tour program and of course it's really nicely done recreated faithfully it's all in Japanese so of course you can't read it but that's the whole thing this is a you know the, 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 the show the main show on here the Japanese one is the one that we're talking about and this is the one they're featuring as far as these kind of little additional pieces here uh, then also you get the uh, poster which is the uh, concert poster advertisement I you know that the promotional poster I believe is what it is that will guard apathy there you go very nice and then of course what you also get here put that down here is the two concerts Let's get up those real quick. So the first one here is the one in Japan. Comes in these nice little replica gatefold sleeves. And it has these nice little, this one, I'm glad that they do this, that they put them in these nice little protective plastic sleeves here. I hate it when they put CDs in just like no, no protection, it's just cardboard. There's the uh, CDs. I'll take one out. never like doing this. I don't want to get my fingerprints all over it. There you go. Beck Bogart, 73. Superstition, as you can see. Great opener, by the way, on this show. <clears throat> so it is two CDs per concert. And they all look like this. There's, there's nothing different with the CDs. They're all on this sort of yellow Atco label. That's concert one. And then you have concert number two here, which is the concert in London live in 74. Again, you have a nice little gatefold. And there in the back, it shows the kind of replica concert ticket. As you can see here, there's a lot of songs on here that are not on any studio album or not at least on this, the one studio album. At this point, they were working on new material. Now, uh, so let, what do I think of this collection? Um, I'm extremely happy with it, to be honest with you. Um, when I first bought it, I thought it was a little pricey. It was about, it was over $80 Canadian for this. That seems a little steep. My Black Sabbath, uh, the live evil box that I got was, was way less than that. It was like $60 even. I think it was even maybe $55. So this is really steep, but you know, it's almost like they knew that for people like me, this is a sort of like must have in their collection because it's so hard to find this album. It's unbelievably hard to find it. So once it's out there, you know, most people would probably drop, you know, a fair amount of money to get it. And I did, and I'm happy with it. The concert was fantastic. This show, in fact, I'll go out and I'll go out and say that the 73 Japan show uh, is, is incredible. They have so much energy on stage. Uh, it's really raw. The vocals are really well done by uh, both Tim uh, Tim Bogart and Carmine Apice, he also sings as well. <clears throat> uh, just great singing, very blues based. Lots of there's also some kind of you know R and B flavor to some of this. They're harmonizing. 
uh, incredible stuff. The guitar guitar playing, fantastic. I mean, just starting with Superstitious with that talk box thing at the beginning is just really, really well done. Uh, songs like uh, Lose Myself with, with You is really good. Jeff's Boogie is fantastic. Going Down is good. A uh, Morning Dew, the last song on side A. It's a great little number. The only complaint I have, it's a 14 minute song. Why is it 14 minutes? Uh, because it's like a 10 minute drum solo by Carmine of Apathy. <clears throat> he is a good drummer. I'm not going to say that he isn't, but do we really need 10 minutes of it? You know, that's debatable. Uh, but I do admire the fact that they didn't edit it out. You know, they give you the whole concert here and com complete. So uh, I'm not going to complain about it. It's one song that's that long. Uh, you have other songs on here that are great as two, great as well. Sorry, uh, sweet, sweet. Surrender is fantastic. I'm So Proud is really good. Ladies, a really great song. Why Should I Care is really good. <clears throat> you know, and the, I mean, just there's everything on here <clears throat> is really, really good. Very raw. Uh, they got they did get a good recording, though, off the stage here. It's very good. The audience, it's a Japanese audience, so they're one of those very polite audiences that stay very quiet until the song is done and they start clapping. <clears throat> so... This was worth, like, uh, seriously, the money that I spent, it's worth it just to have this and the little extras that you get with it. Now, this is just like the icing on top of the cake, in my opinion, because this is another <clears throat> great show. Uh, the one thing that's really great about this is, like I said before earlier, uh, they were working on a new album. Uh, they, I don't think they went into the studio yet, but they had a lot of the songs written and they started playing them on here. Uh, I believe songs like Laughing Lady, <clears throat> uh, Living Alone, and stuff like that were new songs, I believe, uh, on here. So th they were playing uh, new material. They also played like some of the other standards, like Superstition. They also played Boogie, which they did in uh, the prior one. They also did Lady, which they did in the prior album as well. <clears throat> but the, the one thing about this album, the only criticism I'll have about this album, and I can understand why they did it, is because if you look in the notes here inside, and they're very honest in the notes here, like in this side here, when they write up the notes, <clears throat> there's a little section here where it says, uh, where is it here? Sorry. Yeah, mixed by, and they say who is mixed by, additional guitar overdubs done by Jeff Beck, uh, recorded by Ben Finden, and then they also say additional vo vocals recorded by Jordan Carlson. So there's some extra guitar, like studio recording stuff added to this recording. Now, I'm not sure why Jeff did it. It could be because, you know, guitar players can sometimes be, oh, it wasn't perfect, I want to fix it. Uh, <clears throat> but I believe Tim Bogart <clears throat> redid some of his vocals on here because he was not in good shape during this show. Uh, apparently Carmine had to do a lot of his vocals on this show, so he probably went back in fixed it all up so it's properly him singing on it now uh but honestly if you if, if you wouldn't have told me that or if i wouldn't have read that and read it in a book that comes with this uh i wouldn't have probably noticed that it was overdubbed it was really well done in my opinion and you know i'm not i'm not exactly a slouch at picking these things up i mean having worked at a studio for a long time myself i can kind of pick up on these things but <clears throat> this is really good it's, it's a, it, is it as good as the Japan show? Maybe not. Uh, at this point already, they were just about ready to call it quits. Jeff was having some issues with Tim. Tim wasn't liking what was going on with the band. He was having some health issues as well. So they weren't at 100%, but still, at not 100%, they were fantastic on this show. But honestly, if you're going to get this, do yourself a favor. Buy it for this show alone. It's amazing. Great show. Not a bad word I can say about this entire concert. So there's my review of the Beck Bogart Apathy box set. If you see it in your local record store and you feel that it's worth your money, because uh, it's a little pricey, I think, but I, I think it's worth it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little review, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Be sure to subscribe to us, like us, or even leave us a review. You can find us and join the conversation on Facebook. <laughs>